Thank you to Mitchu and Bagley, EDTS, Rub Buddy Bob, No McCality, Aiden D, Pollux, V4J, Rapsuri, Cool Zombie, Prey Girl, and so many others for your support. Qua Ya, Nu Yor Chasani, Ha Chub, Puli Cha Cha, Cha Kula Kuli, Nula Cha Cha, Nuli Enu Qua, U Kulosa, Ha Utilaban, Ha Moli. Hello and welcome to Conley Critique. Today, we're looking at the language of barbarians, Chakor, or Girhan. Look, if, if I don't cover this now, it's probably going to get confusing. Girhan is simply the new and proper name for what was and still is called Chakor in the native tongue. For now on, I will be referring to it as Chakor to ease confusion, but know that the exonym is Girhan. Speaking of native speakers, who are the people who speak this language? And how does it help explain how English, or Sandrari, came to be? It's time for lore. In the year 227 AC, the Calician Empire had just fallen after the Mage Rebellions and the assassination of King Hedgar II. Uh, but things were about to get a lot worse, at least for the Calicians. A force of warriors and pirates from the southwestern continent of Moraval landed on the shores of Coleus, led by a warlord named Chani the White, known for his deep white hair. The Vicardians, as they would uh, be known to the people of the continent, would ravage and pillage their way the strongest city-state in the region, North Storm. After a long and drawn-out siege and a few rejected marriage proposals, Chani destroys the city and kills the king. Chani crowns himself in the destroyed throne room as the Emperor of Coleus and first king of the Ricardian Empire. Chani and his descendants would rule for another hundred years until uh, the first Lycanian Empire would rise up. But the influence of the Vicardians and their language, Chakor, would never fade. The dominant ethnicity and culture in Coleus would continue to be Vicardia, and the language would mix with later Lycanian and Tessian influences, create the most common spoken tongue today. So, as you can see, this is an incredibly important language in the lore of Magnius. But does it live up to that high pedestal? Well, let's find out when we talk about its phonology! Ka, 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 hua, sa, Sha, ha, wa, cha, na, ra, la, ya, wa. Well, it's, um, it's something. The consonants aren't particularly odd, except for what's used as a romanization, or rather just how the language is actually written. Using cha, uh, well, S-C-H for sha, isn't unheard of, but... Shaw could have easily been used instead, you know, an SH. If you could do something weird without a good reason, you shouldn't do it. Speaking of that, why you C instead of K, all it does is confuse native Anglic and Romance speakers. Not even valid as a tribute to Old Norse or German, so they also use K. Now it's time for vowels. E, U, E, O, A, U, A. Huh. Beyond the standard five vowels are two more odd ones. The A ah sound could easily just be A-E or Ash, though I could see how that could get confusing. But just don't use an umlaut. That's not what that means. I mean, an umlaut is supposed to mean that the vowel is centralized, so it isn't that far off, but the umlauts just strike me the wrong way. <laughs> So, Chakra has a lot of grammatical rules and cases, so let's take it slow and methodical. First, tenses. Chakra has a tense system that resembles a kind of a simplified version of Latin. There's perfective and imperfective, split up between voice and the standard past, present, and future. Next, voice, just and passive, and passive is denoted by adding an E, well, Y, to the end of a verb. Then, oh god, conjugations. The conjugations in chakra are split up into the standard first, second, and third, then singular and plural. But all cases are also split up by inclusive and exclusive, as well as direct and indirect voice. It's specific, and I guess it makes things clearer, but that's really unnecessary. You'd think after a thousand years of development, these cases would simplify. Next, there is a division between animate and inanimate. Not too much trouble, I have no problem with it. 
And finally, a simple declension system with locative, genitive, and ablative. Now, a little lesson in vocabulary. We're going to construct a simple sentence to show you how the features of this language meld together. Our sentence is, he walks to the rock. The first, the word, to walk, which is yoti. Then we have the direct singular first conjugation, making it chuyoti. Then the word for rock, yosa. We take that and add the ablative singular marker to it, making it yosanu. The final sentence is chuyoti yosanu. Now for the conclusion. Well, not as bad as, say, Arkum. Chakor has some flaws and work to be done with it. If it's trying to be Nordic or Germanic, it's squarely failed. I just don't see how English or even a dialect of English could evolve from this, so I place it solidly between Volkamon and Akaea. That's all for today, but join me next time when I review something a little different. The Romance Language of Knights and Bedouins, Larcanian. Thank you.